Hi everyone, I'm Rob Horlacher from Project Sandbox, a University of Lethbridge Library initiative. In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit a video with Adobe Premiere. Alright, so the first thing that you want to do is start up Adobe Premiere. Once that's done, this is going to be the screen that you'll see. So if you notice, it'll say new project, open project, or list a bunch of older projects that you've done. Um, since I want to create a new project, I will click new project. Once we're in the screen, it'll have this additional box. At the tight, you can name it. Um, I'm going to name it awesome video. Um, where you can save it, and then some capture settings. Generally, you don't need to worry about the capture settings because uh, most of the footage you'll probably bring into here is just drag and drop. Um, so, uh, that's all fine. Um, just be aware that if you um, create a document that is already in existence, this is a stage where you can completely overwrite that document. Um, actually, I'll change this back to Untitled, and I'll show you what it'll do. So once I hit OK, it'll say this project already exists. Confirm overwrite. This action cannot be undone. If I hit Yes, that previous document will be totally erased, um, and you won't be able to recover it whatsoever. So be very careful at this part. Um, but I don't care. I know what this untitled document is and it doesn't matter if it gets overwritten, so I'll just say yes. After that, you go into the actual Adobe Premiere layout. So if you notice, um, there's a couple different sections to this. There's an area here that says import media to start. Um, this little preview window, you'll see what that is in a second. A toolbar, a timeline, um, this is just like a little audio bar, and then there's a bunch of different workspaces at the top. So before I add anything, the first thing I want to mention to you is what workspaces are. Workspaces basically make your flow a lot simpler when you create a video document. Um, this is true for Photoshop and stuff like that too, but we're just going to focus on this for now. Um, so the very first one that we would do is assembly, since we're trying to just start putting the video together. Um, if you want to click editing, if you notice, the whole layout just changed for the um, software. Um, so that would be if you're editing, if you want to modify the color of the video clips, there's also a different change. Um, your effects, audio, graphics, pretty much if you're working on one of these things, it, it does make it a lot simpler to have it in one of these different um, sections. Um, but like I said, the first thing we're going to do is just assembly. Um, so I don't have any content in here yet, so I'm going to bring up um, my little window. I'm aware you can't see it. And I'm going to bring in some audio and video clips. Um, for your information, these audio clips and video clips are actually Creative Commons material, um, which means that you have the ability to use it for free um, depending upon its use. Um, Oh, so this says failure to import. So let's see what actually failed. Uh, okay, so it's actually fine. The thing that failed was I had a couple uh, links in this uh, audio place, just to remind me of who gave me the uh, audio clips. But the thing to keep in mind with Creative Commons material is that you need to use it responsibly. So say for this audio clip, it has an attribution license, so that means that I'm going to have to put a link saying that music was by this artist somewhere in here with generally a link to their video um, or their audio clip, wherever that might sit. Video, on the other hand, um, you would have to do this, but I got all of this video from a site called Pexels and Pixabay. Um, and all of these video clips have CC0 licensing, which means you can use them for any purposes, whether it's commercial, not commercial, and you don't actually need to attribute anybody. Um, it's always a good idea to, for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to because I'm using it as an example, but I will be putting the link to the song in the description. So if you want to listen to that song later, 
It'll be in the description of this YouTube video. Anyway, let's get started. So if you notice, it says drop media here to create a sequence. So what a sequence is, is that's what's actually going to house all of your video. Um, and there's two ways to create it. One is to drag a video clip, just whichever one you want, to the timeline. Um, when you do that, if you notice the timeline will fill, it'll pick up all of the um, qualities of that video clip. So if you wanted, say, a 1080p video clip and you drag and drop a 720p audio clip or video clip, um, that whole timeline will actually now be 720p as opposed to the 1080p that you want. Um, so be mindful of drag and dropping. It's not the best way to ensure that you're getting the results you want. Um, I'll show you actually the best way to do that. So to get your best results, you'll want to go to sequence at the very top. Oop, my bad. You'll want to go to file new. And then under new, you'll see sequence. And this is where you can pick the actual sequence that you want to have. Um, I like to go to this digital SLR setting because generally it has all the settings that I really like to go for, whether it's 1080p, 720p, um, and then your frame rate and stuff like that. Um, so the, with whatever footage that you're using, make sure you are aware of what that footage is as well. So whether it is 1080p or whether it's 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second or whatever. Um, just make sure you have a good handle of what that is. If you don't, though, and you're 100% sure that it's all the same, you can just drag and drop it to the timeline and everything will be okay. Um, but I don't want to do that. So all of the footage that I got is 720p, and it's 25 frames per second. So I'm going to click on this DLSLR. Um, 24 frames per second and let's see if I can change this to 25. Um, that's where it is. So since it's 25 frames per second, I just went into the settings area um, and this is where you can change all of your information for your sequence. So the frame size, frames per second, um, I'm not going to go into pixel aspect ratio or anything, but this is where you can change everything and you can change the name of your sequence as well here. So I'm just gonna change it to not awesome song, it's a video, awesome video. All right, so we're gonna hit okay. And if you notice, now I have a new timeline there and it's set to everything I've wanted it to do. So after you've put in all of your new stuff, you can start adding content to the timeline. Um, to do that, it's just like when we started a new timeline. So you can click one of the links and just drag it in. Uh, we're going to keep existing settings. And now you can play it and see what it's like. So this video doesn't have any audio. That's why it's quiet right now. Um, one of the ways you can tell if it has audio or not too, though, is when I drag this to the timeline, um, no audio filled in the bars down here. Because these three tracks down here are for audio. These three tracks are for video. Um, also, if you look over here, you'll notice that this fireworks one has a little film strip and a little waveform. If I click and drag that one, you'll see that it actually brought an audio clip. Um, I don't actually want to use the audio from any of these videos, though. So what we need to do is we need to delete this audio. <clears throat> so to delete the audio, what you do is you right click on whichever um, clip you want. I'm going to right click down here. And then you do click unlink. What unlink does is it separates the audio file from the video file so that you can delete one without deleting the other. So I'm going to delete that. Um, something else I'm going to do though is I'm going to bring um, my song to the timeline because I want to edit all these video clips to this music that I have. So we're just going to see what it looks like right now with the audio the way it is and with the two video clips I added. Way. 
So I actually kind of like the way this looks right now without any editing. The music choice was pretty good for this type of content. Um, but you wouldn't learn a lot if I just left it. So we're going to start mucking around with things. And to do that, we need to use this little toolbar right here. So um, if you notice, I have the selection tool selected right now. What that does is you can click on video clips and you can move them around with that. Um, just to show you a quick way to suck this back to the beginning, if you click on the space in between uh, with your right click, you can click ripple delete and this will suck it right in so there's no space in between the two. Um, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start dragging some of the other content. Um, it's kind of hard for me to see which video clip this one is. So I just want to zoom in a little bit to get a better idea. And to zoom, you just use this bottom bar down here. All right, so this one is fireworks and this one's party people or people partying. Same thing. So I'm going to bring in people celebrating. And if you notice, when I drink, bring in this clip, there is a um, audio bar above the audio bar I already have. So if I was just to drop it, it would actually remove the music that I just had added. As you can see, we don't want that. So a way to fix that is to bring the audio down to a different level. And now when we grab one of these audio clips, it won't remove the song. Um, once again, I want to remove this entirely, so I'm just clicking on link and deleting it. Um, let's bring in a couple more. So I'll bring in people holding fireworks. Remove that. Make this a little bigger now so I can see a little bit more. Just generic fireworks. Ripple delete to make sure it's close. And let's throw in this dancing thing. And I can't... Oh, cool. Obviously a pretty awesome choice. And now we want to start editing them to the music a little bit. Um, I have one for sure that I want to be the first clip because I think it'll look pretty neat. So um, one thing you can also do is what I just did. Um, to explain to you what I did, with the select tool, you can just drag and drop a box like you normally would. And you can move the clips around. Um, something else you can actually do, say if you had like a two hour long video with a bunch of little clips and you want to ensure that you're dragging everything over to make room for something, there's a tool that can help you with that. And that's this track select forward tool, or you can hit A. Um, so if you click that and click to click on whichever clip um, you want to move, It'll drag, grab everything that's to the right of that clip. So if you notice, this first one wasn't selected, um, but all of these things to the right, including the audio, was selected. Um, if we didn't want to move the audio, we could just lock the audio in place there. Um, but I want to grab, say, the fireworks all the way over. You just click on fireworks, it'll select fireworks and everything. Then you can just click the select tool and move everything over. Um, so if you have a really long timeline, just remember that that tool exists. But I want to start editing to the music a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this clip over and I'm going to listen to see if there's a part where everything should start. So that would be a cool place to start, just where the music kind of sucks in and starts playing. So you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard, and this will help move the uh, selector tool to the left or the right. And it helps to zoom in with audio to see the waveform to see how it's acting. So if you hear, it makes a really deep sound right there. That will be a cool place to start this ballet dancer starting. 
So now when we play it, then what I generally like to do if it's music, audio is a little different, um, like say dialogue's a little different, um, is I like to edit it to the beats of the music a lot because it creates this really satisfying um, motion. So we're going to do that. And we're going to kind of haphazardly throw some of these clips in here to do that. So, so let's move that down. And if you notice, when I go to the left and right side of these clips, it, an arrow with a little rank, rectangle will pop up. If you click on it, you can adjust your clip and cut it to wherever you might want it to be. Um, another way you can cut your clips is if you grab this razor tool, and then wherever you click it on that video clip, it'll just make a cut so that you can remove different pieces, stitch things together in different ways, and stuff like that. Um, but we're just going to keep moving this along a little bit. And I'll probably fast forward this video because it's not fun to watch me just like do this same process again and again. But I want you to see what the process looks like, but fast. All right, so we have roughly something that'll work for us now. I'll give you an idea of what I did. All right, so that's roughly what I've created just with the tools that I've showed you. So I use that track select forward tool just to select everything, just the select tool to grab whichever one or to grab the ends of video clips. Um, and then the razor tool to cut things up when I don't want to um, just drag from an end. Um, so there's a couple other things that we can use whenever we're cre creating something. Um, so say this is just the video I want, and I want the music just to end pretty much right after that. What we can do is grab that razor tool, and then on the audio, we're just going to click somewhere. Um, then do the select tool, which is also V on the keyboard. So we hit that, click there, and delete. So now our video clip is just this short little bit down here. Um... What we can do, though, is I'm actually going to make that audio a little bit shorter. And I want this audio just to fade out um, after it does all of this because I don't want it to keep playing. And if you can watch right here, it's a little jarring when it just stops immediately. But if you give it a little fade out, it'll help it out a little bit. So we're going to do that. So to add a fade out, we need to actually add something called a keyframe to the video. 
So if you notice, I just extended this by grabbing the bottom right here. And then this little line pops up here. This line is associated with the volume of the clip. So when it's at the top, it's really loud versus here, it's a little bit quieter. So what we need to do is we need to manipulate that line to go to the very bottom so that there's no sound. How we do that is with a keyframe. So I want the music to start fading out right after the end of this clip. So we need to get in right close. So I want to zoom in with this little bar down here all the way and start right there. Now what we do is you need to clip, click on the audio clip. And if you notice, there's a little dot down here that appeared. When I clip off, it's not selected anymore. Or if I make this too small, you can't see it. But if you just extend it enough to see this little bar and click your audio clip, you can click that dot and it'll add a dot to the audio, um, the audio clip. What this is, is it's a keyframe. So the keyframe is basically saying, at this point, I want it to be this way. So at this point, we still want it to be at full volume. Whereas at the end of the audio, so all the way over here, we want it to be completely quiet. So we're going to add another audio clip, or another keyframe, sorry. Zoom in all the way to see where it is. And then you can click the keyframe and drag it down. Now, if you notice, there's a slow little um, gradient right there that's going from this loudness all the way down to quiet. So now when we play it, it fades out. So that's something that you can do with audio. Um, if you right click wherever this FX thing is on the audio, this is where you can change it. So right now it's on level. You can change it to channel volume if you want, or a panner. Um, and when you click on any of these, it will adjust it to whatever um, one you select. So if you notice, when I clicked on bypass, this line just went down all the way because that's what it's telling bypass to do currently. Versus if I right click on the little FX again and click level, it'll go back to the way it was. So that's how you can manipulate audio with keyframes. Video works exactly the same way. So um, if you notice when I extended this, we can see a little line appear. Might need to extend it a little bit more. There we go. And now you can see that the keyframes there. So if we wanted, say, with this ballet dancer, um, normally the default one is opacity. So if you turn it down all the way, you can't see anything up all the way. You'll be able to see the whole thing and it won't be transparent whatsoever. If you right click, we have options like the position of the video clip. So we can move it from left to right, um, the scale, uh, the rotation of it. Um, things like that. Then opacity, like I said, so how transparent the video clip is. And then time remapping too. So I believe time remapping would have to do with like how fast um, the video clip is actually going in time. Um, but we don't want to actually do any of that. The only one that we do want to manipulate right now is we want to change the opacity. And we just want to do this with this very last clip. So to change the opacity with the time selector, I'm going to move it somewhere near the end and click on the dot. Once again, add a keyframe to the thing, saying that at this point, we want it to be totally visible. But at the end, I want it to be totally invisible. So now when we watch the clip, there's a good little fade out. And we could even go to the extent of syncing up the sound with that uh, audio clip. So if I drag all these over, drag this all the way over. If you notice, when I bring it over, it clips to the audio clip. If that's not happening, you just need to click this little magnet. Because see, with it deselected and I do that, it's not telling me that it's lined up with the audio or with the video clip. But with it, it with it selected you can just drag and drop it there. Then 
I want the music to go like that. So they're both going to fade out exactly the same time. The timing might be weird, but I'm not going to the extent of editing this really intensely. So let's watch it. Cool. So that works roughly the way I expect it to. So we got our audio in place. We got all of our video clips. So they're all organized how we want it. The next thing we need to do is add a title to the video because right now it's just black space. So there's a couple ways to add titles. One is to go into this graphics section and there's a toolbar right here. So if you grab the type tool, you can drag out a text box on your thing, wherever it might be, and you can type out the name of the video. So this is called awesome video. Um, if we were in sem assembly, it would look like this and you can see that this is where the title is. Um, if you want to change anything though, you will have to go into graphics and depending on your version of uh, Adobe Premiere, it might not actually look like this verbatim. But this is what we want to change. So with this selected on this screen, um, we can grab the toolbar and we can change the things like the fonts, um, whether it's centered, uh, you can change the spacing in between the letters if you want right there. Um, we can change the font, like I said. Uh, pretty much anything you could do on Microsoft Office, you can do right here when this actually has a little more options. Um, and this is how you can change like the color of it and stuff like that too, if you wanted it to be a different color. Um, one of the really nice things to do too is if you just want to make sure it's right in the center, you can use this little align um, option. So if you click vertically align, um, it'll vertically align this box. So what we want to do is we want to shrink that box down. So when you hit vertically align, it actually is centered. And then you can center it uh, horizontally as well. Or you can put it to the left or right, whatever. But then we can ensure that it's actually in the video. Um, and perfectly centered. Um, one thing I didn't mention to you is how the video and audio layers work. Um, video layers work like layers. So if you notice, my text is showing above the uh, ballet dancer. If I want it to be the opposite, you would just need to grab the video clip of the ballerina and move it over top of the text. And then the text is going to be hidden by that ballerina layer. We obviously don't want that though, so we're going to leave it. Audio, on the other hand, does not work that way. Audio comes out as one big blob and it's all equal. The only thing that will adjust whether some audio is louder than the other is by playing with that bar at the bottom. Um, so we got our text on there. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, but... Now we want to do some other things. So say you wanted to add um, something at the end that, I don't know, it says coming up next, like this top one. Um, these are a whole bunch of different templates that are actually built into Adobe Premiere that look cool. So you could grab this and drop it over there. So now when we play this, I probably should have went a little farther ahead than I actually did. We'll get to it eventually. Okay, so if you saw, coming up next popped on kind of in a neat way, and then it popped off in a neat way. So, depending on what you want, you can see what all of these different clips do. And if you just ho hover over top of it, it'll give you a rough idea of actually what it does do. Um, so keep that in mind if you don't want to design your own title because like obviously mine's as beautiful as it comes anyway. I'm lying to you. Okay, so we know how to put a title in. We know how to edit the video, edit audio, um, do some template stuff, change keyframes. So there's only two more things I'm going to show you. The first is how you manipulate the color of your video clips. To do that, if you click on a video clip, whichever one, we're going to do the ballerina. Um, let's do this full frame one because you can see everything really nicely. Um, then you can click on this little color section. 
on the right hand side you'll notice that all of these options are now selected. Um, this allows us to manipulate the colors. So we can do things like mess with the temperature, so cooler or warmer, um, mess with the tint, whatever you might want it to be, play with the exposure to make it brighter or darker, contrast to make um, the difference between white and blacks really significant, um, you can just manipulate the highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, all of that stuff. Saturation, saturation is really important, um, especially if you want like black and white and stuff. Um, but this is where you can change all of that to make your video clip look a little more polished. Um, in this creative section too, it has a whole bunch of different presets that you can look through, kind of like on Instagram and stuff. And you can select them just by cycling through this little image to get a rough idea and then clicking on it whenever you find the one you like. Um, you can do things like faded film too. I would suggest just looking through all these sec sec um, sections, yeah, sections is right, and seeing what they all do because it's really a powerful tool. So after you're done adding color to a clip and manipulating it however you want, um, one thing I will point out is how you can uh, give those same settings to another video clip. So to do that, um, say this one, we have some Lumetri color settings on it now from playing around. Um, so I'm going to click on that and hit Control C, or you can right click on it and hit Copy. Um, if I wanted to put those exact same settings on this video clip, oh, I shortened that for some reason, on this video clip, you would just click on this time, making sure that this is selected. And then you can right click and hit paste, or you can just hit control V on your keyboard. This will bring across those same color settings to the additional video clip. Um, so say if you're using um, just like different shots, but it was taken at the same time of day and like from roughly the same angles and there's not a lot of change, you can just copy and paste the, um, the settings from one video clip to the other just to make sure that there's like a really cohesive look to all of those things. So now we know how to put everything together, change the sounds, um, kind of start really bringing everything together. Um, so the final thing that I need to show you is how to actually put it all together. And that's with exporting the video. Um, videos don't export in the same way that say like images and stuff do. Most of the time with an image, you can just hit save as and tell it to save as a JPEG, um, which is just like a normal image file, and it'll create that. Video files don't have that same ability. To do a video file, you have to tell the program to put it all together. So all these individual clips we just created, we want it to be one giant clump of footage. To do that, you need to export it. So to export, you go into File, Export, uh, Media. Once you go into File, Export, Media, it'll take a second. I'll click on it again. Oh, so it wasn't popping up. That's because I didn't have this selected. Or if we move over to, uh, that's where our bits are. Generally, it's easier to go into assembly. So if you have this selected, file, export, media, then it'll bring up the frame. You just need to click on whichever thing actually will correspond with the video clip so it knows what you want to export. So that works if, as you could see from me clipping, clicking on that. Um, it'll also work by clicking on the timeline and then going to the export media as well. Um, so here's where we can see all of our video clip. So we can scrub through it right here. You can make it shorter if you don't want it to be as long as it is. Um, I'll show it to you just as an example. Um, so now it's only going to play from the beginning to this point. Um, you can change the name of your video and if you click on that, you can click on where it actually goes to. You can see me right there. Um, but up here is where one of the most important things um, you can change is. So this is a codec and this is what stitches everything together. Um, if you're doing high definition footage, you should be doing this H.264. 
Um, as you can see, there's tons of different codecs you can choose from. You can even export them as images if you want. Um, AVI is a pretty common file type. Uh, H.264 though is high definition footage and that's mostly what you'll be using. So we're gonna click on that and then go to video because we wanna look at the settings to make sure they're still correct. So our width and height are correct because this is what it is for 720p. Frame rate's 25. Um, nothing right there is important for us to go through, just to export this video. Um, this VBR one pass or two pass is the next thing I wanna draw your attention to though. Um, I like to use VBR two pass because it helps um, lower bit rates and make sure everything is um, really solidly put together because it just goes through all of the footage in extra time. Um, for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go to VBR one pass because it's quicker. Then you can set your target bit rate and maximum bit rate. This is what's going to affect your file size in the end. So if after you export the video, you notice you have a really huge file size, I would drop this target bit rate and maximum bit rate. I normally set it to eight and 10. Oh, let's change this back. There we go. When I hit one on my numpad, it changes the screen. So that's what just happened. But I liked it to be uh, normally eight for target bit rate and 10 for maximum bit rate. Most of the time that creates a pretty solid thing. But like I said, if your video file is way too big, you can try lowering it and experimenting. Um, so that's pretty good for their audio. We did it at 48,000 Hertz, so that's all okay. Um, so after that, you can hit export. Um, what I generally like to do though is actually hit this Q button. Because what Q does is it, is it brings up Adobe Media Encoder. Um, and that piece of software is totally dedicated towards exporting your video clip. Um, so we're just going to wait for this to open. All right, so you can see that it popped into Adobe Media Encoder. Um, just double check to make sure all your settings are okay. And if they are, you just hit this play button and then it's going to go through all of your video and it's going to export it. Um, this one's exporting fairly quick cause it is really short. Um, if you have a long thing, like I've waited hours before to have certain things, um, exported. Um, after it says done though, and you got the little checkbox, you can close this. Um, I'm not going to save this because I don't want to, um, but if you did want to save it, you could just hit save. Um, I'll just save it for you so you can see, or you can hit save as if you want to save the Premiere file somewhere else. Um, then you can see I exported it to the desktop and now my video is created. So that's the video. Let me bring up my face again. There we go. So um, that's what I have for you about Adobe Premiere. I hope that was helpful in getting you started with the program. Um, once you start to get familiar with where everything is, it becomes such a fast process to use it. Um, as always, I didn't show you everything that Adobe Premiere can do. So remember to just be creative and try things out. Um, thank you again for watching. If you would like to subscribe to the library YouTube channel, you can click subscribe right now, um, or you can click one of the videos on the screen if you would like to watch something else. Um, once again, just thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you soon.